What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash Tales from the Customer. All right, this story's called Just Give Me the Go-Kart. Sorry, it's an incredibly long story. For Christmas, the wife and I decided it would be awesome to get our kids a go-kart. Obviously, it had to fit adults. <laughs> so we find the one we want. It's more of a dune buggy. It has headlights, horn, everything. It goes about 40 miles per hour. Badass. Pretty awesome. Also, it was just in our price range. The place that had it is a farm store that sells stuff for around the farm. I decided to go in to talk to them about it. Oh, this was just after Thanksgiving. We wanted to make sure and give ourselves plenty of time for it to be delivered. So I go into the store and ask about it. They said they can order it online. They also told me that if I get it and put it on their credit card, I would get 5% back on it. I figured it was too easy, so I said yes. They had me apply and I got approved in just a few minutes. We then got the credit card number and went to check out. The computer system is weird and didn't didn't have a place to type in the credit card number. That seemed odd to me, but he said he just needed to call customer support and have them enter the order. I figured, no problem. This was about 5 in the evening. We were on hold for about 30 minutes. I finally told him I would just come back tomorrow and we could do it then. He told me I could just call them if I wanted instead of coming in. I figured, why not? So the next day I call and tell them what's going on and they said they could order it. We ordered it and everything seemed good. The next day, I get an email saying the order was cancelled. I call them back and asked what happened. They said they weren't sure why it was cancelled and to call the bank. I call the bank that issued the card and they said that the go-kart was more expensive than what the card was approved of. I asked if they could just raise the balance $400 to cover it. They politely declined. Okay, at this point, it's my fault. I should have asked more questions. So I call the store customer service back and ask if I can just pay $400 on my debit card and the rest on my new credit card. They said sure. We finished the transaction and I thought I was good. Later that day I checked my bank account to make sure the $400 goes through. It was pending and eventually disappears off my bank statement. Frustrated I call the company back. I ask them why it was cancelled. They aren't sure but they try to put the order in again. They say I'm good and then before I hang up they say it got cancelled. I asked why. They said they weren't sure but I should call the bank again. I call the bank and they said that since they attempted to put a charge on my card, the funds were being held. Since that was everything on the card, there wasn't any free funds on the card to cover the second purchase. I told them that the company cancelled it and asked if they would release the funds. They agreed but had to call the company to confirm it was cancelled. Too easy. No. So they released the funds and I made the purchase again. Immediately the order was cancelled again. The company had no idea what was going on, so they said they had to call loss prevention to figure it out. They said I should get an email the next day. This all happened over the weekend. Monday at work, I finally called them back because I haven't heard from them. They said that there should be a note in my account from loss prevention about letting the purchase go through. We put the purchase in, and again, it gets cancelled. I'm kinda pissed at this point. I try to keep my cool because the guy doing the ordering isn't at fault. He said he was going to talk to loss prevention again. Me trying to be proactive at this point and knowing the procedures, asked the guy if he will call the bank to explain what happened and ask them to release the funds. He reluctantly agrees. Side note, somewhere in the story I skipped over a purchase because I had to ask them to release the funds on the credit card at least twice before this. When he calls to explain, the guy at the bank was pissed. He said he can only release the funds one more time. It was kind of funny because the guy at the bank was really letting the guy have it. So the guy at the customer service tried to tell the guy at the bank what was going on. He said, I'll show you what happened. He said he was going to put the order through so the guy at the bank could see what was going on. He started to put in the order. I had to stop him. I asked the guy at the bank if he put the order in and it got canceled. Would he release the funds? The bank guy said no. So if the funds don't get released, it would take up to two weeks to get the funds released naturally. 
family. And then it would be too late to get the go-kart delivered into me for Christmas. We hung up with the guy from the bank. I told the customer service guy that it was no longer something that could be resolved at his level. I need his boss. His boss gets on and starts giving excuses like the bank's canceling all these transactions. I told her no, it's her company. I get pretty frustrated with her because she was trying to pass the blame. I get super angry with her. She was giving me ridiculous options to resolve the issue. I finally said, well, just give me $400 off it so it can all be put on the credit card. I figured the split purchase is what was causing all the havoc. She agreed. I asked if that would solve everything. She assured me it would. So we put the order in. Cancelled again. I lost it. I kept my cool the entire time up to this point. I absolutely lost it and told them they ruined Christmas for my kid. Called them incompetent. Told them they need to get their crap together. I was overly dramatic, but I couldn't help it. I told her I need to talk to her boss. She said he would have to call back because he was in a meeting. I told her I want to call back within the hour. So I'm waiting and the original customer service guy calls. He said he might have a solution. They would go ahead and ship the go-kart. It will take about two weeks. That way it would give the funds time to drop off the credit card. I should have my physical card and I can just make the purchase in store. Also, I was gonna get a $400 gift card. I figured it was a great compromise. I told them I need an update of when the go-kart actually gets shipped and updates on any changes. This company was completely incompetent and I wasn't taking any chances. So I finally get word that it ships and is ready for me at the store. The guys at the store immediately knew who I was when I showed up. Apparently I made an impression. They were super nice though and to top it off they charged like $500 for shipping. I told the guys at the store that I am only paying what I was told I was in the beginning. They agreed. I now have an awesome go-kart. It was the biggest pain I ever went through and almost quit halfway through. I'm glad I did though. Dude, I, I don't know how I would I would not be able to handle that, man. Oh, you have no idea, man. Like PayPal, eBay, I can't. I just hate customer service. I hate dealing with it. This guy's a champion. Oh my God. I don't know, dude, old people, bro. They have the patience to deal with this crap. I think it's just because the internet spoiled me and you know, old people are used to having to call people for like literally everything. They were used to the hassle, okay? Back then it wasn't even like, oh, sh I gotta, I gotta call, I, there's no texting, I have to take it off myself, no. So you go back far enough and you had landlines and you couldn't even, you couldn't even talk at the same time as someone else. I mean, unless you wanted to be like in a three-way call. So yeah, every little thing, they had to pick up the phone, dial it, and then it's the same. <laughs> See, I appreciate the convenience of like customer service that's like resolved like instantly through like maybe chat. I don't even like doing chats because it takes so long for them to get back to you. I think my biggest aversion is the wait, the holding. I think that's it. But e even then, I don't even like calling people that I do like. I'm, I'm just lazy. I guess that's it. All right. This story is called Just One More Miserable Car Purchase Story. It's too cold out and the roads are sucky. Are suck. So why not share a car buying experience from some time ago? Man, I hate when the roads are suck. <laughs> An elderly relative who bought new cars every three years was ready for a new one and surprised me by saying he'll sell me his old one if I want it for what the dealer will give him on trade. A really nice car. I was stoked. So I just waited to hear something. Knowing money isn't a factor for him and the dealer would lowball the trade-in because that's what they do with customers who aren't negotiators. A few weeks later, he calls me, says he got his new car and the dealer has his old car. Here's the guy's name. It's the sales guy he's been using for 15 years. Just call him and tell him you're the guy who's coming in to get his trade. He's expecting you. Hmm, I figured he would be quoted a trade-in price, but I'd buy it direct from him for the same price. But oh well, I'll call the sales guy and set up a time for the weekend. I arrive at the dealership and ask for the sales guy. He's with a customer. Can anyone else help me? I figure I better keep my mouth shut because who knows if anyone is supposed to know they are going to sell me a car for no profit. I say I'll wait. A while later, sales guy greets me, all happy, and we get to business. Raves about my relative. He's a fantastic guy. Walks me through the deal. Says my relative even told them to change the oil and put new tires on at his expense. Says that since they knew they had a customer and as a favor to my relative, they even 
put it on the CPO plan, so I got some extra warranty. Do I need to test drive? No, I know the car. I know how my relative drives, like a 90-year-old woman. I'm good. I'm ready to go. No problem, OP. My finance guy, he wants to go over the deal, but he's gonna be a little while. Meanwhile, let's get the key so I can walk you through the car's features. Uh-oh, they can't find the keys. It seems like the lady who takes care of such things must have locked them in the safe last night instead of putting them on the key rack. Sales guy said he called her at home to come in and open the safe so they can get the keys. I immediately smell a rat. On the busiest day of the week, Saturday, the safe cannot be accessed? And somehow they know the keys are in there? Now I sit for two hours. I know this is just a wear me down, so when the finance guy tries to pitch all kinds of extra crap, I'll be tired, irritated, and an easy target. Options are limited. I just want to get this done. Doesn't seem better for me to say I'll come back another time. It's a 45 minute drive. So I wait and am not happy about it. Finally, the keys are located from the safe. I'm supposed to be impressed that the lady came in on her day off to open it. Such great customer service. It was a total lame lie. Sales guy walks me through the car's controls, explains that I will get a survey from the manufacturer. And if I cannot rate him five out of five on every item, please give him a chance to make things right before I send it in. A long sob story how last year he lost out on a $10,000 bonus because one customer didn't understand the rating system and gave all ones instead of fives. These surveys determine his bonus. Wah, wah, wah. And now, finally, the finance guy is ready for me. He starts pushing warranties, add-ons, road service plans, etc. I'm a quick no, no, no on everything. I'm ready to write a check. Let's go. Finance guy is disappointed I didn't bite on anything, but gives me the bottom line and I hand him a check. He actually says, since the banks are closed, I can take the car on Monday when they can verify the check is good. After all, I am a new customer. I said, if I can't take the car now, there's no deal, goodbye. Sales guy is summoned. He makes a big production out of vouching for me since I'm a relative of the previous owner, like he's my best friend in the world now. Finance guy caves, meaning the little show is over. Damn, this guy's good. I can take the car. Finally, this circus is closing. The next weekend, I go to visit my relative to thank him in person. He says, he's only charged you X amount of money, right? That's where they gave me on the trade. Uh, I do some quick math in my head to compensate for sales tax and nope, they charged me more like X dollars plus $2,000. I say the guy mentioned new tires. Maybe that was added to the car cost. Nope, he paid for the tires and the oil change. In fact, the guy just marked it up $2,000 after my relative, probably the easiest mark he's ever had as a regular, told him to sell it to me for what the trade-in value was. My relative was furious. He wrote me a check for the markup and insisted I take it. And that was the last car he bought from that sales guy. After 15 years of purchases every three years, probably at sticker price or with a token, I'm gonna hook you up discount from the sticker. So a couple of weeks later, I also found the rating system on the survey confusing. Wasn't a uh, one the, the best? Gee, that's that's, that's what I thought it said. Two weeks later, I was getting calls from the sales guy, but I didn't answer and never returned his voicemail. Z ah, see, that's what sucks. Where's the trust? Uh, back in the good old days, I'm just kidding. No one can trust anyone ever. Like, honestly. And if you act like back then was like full of, uh, ooh, I almost said a boopy word. A boopy? An oopsie. Boopsie. Okay. Freaking, uh, Honest Abes and Thomas Kirkmans from, uh, Designated Survivor. Again, watch that show i keep mentioning it but i keep watching it. also atypical that's a good one yo i just realized something i could like bring up shows too and not just video games that's crazy i only thought of the sopranos well anyway as i was not saying back when the party was all about partying i was a mini party starter then my mom okay party starter will smith good song also don't be a trashy salesman all right this story's called changing car batteries is one of the most difficult things to do on a car <laughs> just just went to an automotive store to get a new battery. The one I have is shot, and it's eight years old. Not the children. Surprise!
least it didn't go out on me sooner. God damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just I'm imagining him talking about a kid now. <laughs> anyway, I asked the worker to test it just to confirm my suspicion. <laughs> And it indeed was dead. Oh my god. We go back inside. I tell him which battery and he starts carting it outside This is odd to me. I've never seen a retail auto shop do this. So I ask him what he's doing Here's how the conversation went him pushing the cart out after the purchase was made. Oh, uh, are, are you taking that outside for me? Thanks. Those are pretty heavy. Well, yeah, I have to get it out there somehow to put it in the car. Oh Y'all do that? You seem pretty busy. I can do it myself. <laughs> sure you can. Me a bit surprised at his response. Um, yeah, I, I can. It's just four nuts. Two for the battery and two for the harness. I even have the wrench in my pocket. Whatever. When you need help, I'll probably be too busy, but if you really think you know how to do something like this, me having replaced my fair share of batteries, I think I got it. I'll be back in a few minutes to get the credit for the old battery. Sure you will. I shake my head so flabbergasted that someone would just say something like that. I get that a lot of folks my age don't know how to do anything really, but he could have just asked rather than being condescending. When in finished, but I'm assuming that means I finished. When I finished and went back inside, he was helping someone else. So one of the other workers gave me the old battery credit. <laughs> Coward. Couldn't even face the the results of his assumptions. Ha! <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> like, damn, bro. Thought it the mock I hope that was right. Otherwise, I just sounded stupid. I mean, 99.44% of you will not know what I just said. But if you do know what I just said, I hope I said it right. I hope I did. My brown family make me insecure about speaking that language. They always call me Q. I don't want to be Q. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.